السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Alhamdulillah Nahmadahu wa nasta'inahu wa nasta'afiru wa na'udhu balay min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati amalina man yahtillah falamudhalallah wa man yudlil falahadiyalah wa ashara la ilaha illallah wahtahu la sharika lah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh يا الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق توقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجال كثير ونساء اتقوا الله الذي تسألون به والأرحام إن الله كان لكم رقيبا يا الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويكفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد إن استك حديث كتاب الله عز وجل وحسن حدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر مر محتوثاتها وكل محدث في الإسلام بدع وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار. All praise is due to Allah Azza wa Jal. We praise Him and we extol Him. And we send the finest of salutations on Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Read the most truthful of speech is the Book of Allah, and the finest guidance is that of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In the most Evil all affairs are the newly invented ones. Bida. And every bida is a going astray, and every going astray leads to the hellfire. It's a lot of fear. As what follows today, my dear Brother Salam and Iman, I would like to give us a brief reminder on the, the fadl, the blessing, and the importance of seeking and acting upon correct knowledge with light of faith and with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lies our success now that we are living in this time period which is known as the information age we have so many influencers on social media with alhamd which has its benefits but also it has its harms and I don't want to speak about the multitudes of young Muslims who have come to me asking me to watch this or they have sent me something on my app telling me to listen to this but Ma'asif Shadid I'm very sorry to say that many young minded people are becoming misled by these social influencers. So as Muslims, we need to be able to understand or ascertain who we should be following or who we should be listening to on social media. Which sites should we refer to? Or which sites or which scholars should we quote from? And how can we understand and know that these individuals are following the correct aqidah and manhaj? 
before we forward these sites, before we forward these videos, we need to have a basic, a general understanding or grasp of what is knowledge, what is considered as knowledge. And when we're speaking about knowledge, we're speaking about the ilm, the knowledge which is from Quran and authentic sunnah. So this is why I always advise myself, I advise myself and others that we need to advise the youth to become talabat al-ilm, become students of knowledge from a young age. We need to advise the youth, not only about the dunya we are sciences, but to also take a portion of their time to be genuine talabat al-ilm, students of Islamic knowledge. We cannot be knowledgeable in all of the sciences and schools of thoughts in Islam. La. But we need to advise one another, to especially advise the youth, to become firmly grounded in authentic knowledge and to understand where and who to take from. Because many youth are becoming radicalized. I'm approached from youth on a regular basis. And they're sending me things which are totally against the correct teachings in the Quran and Sunnah. Which are totally against what Muhammad Sallallahu came with. So we need to advise the youth in a manner, in a way, so that they will be able to have a mindset that they'll be able to ascertain and see things for what they truly are so that we can also protect the minds of our youth from becoming corrupted with a type of a groupy mentality. We have seen this in so many different pockets of the city, that we have so many youth, they come together with a groupy type of mentality. That's why today, I would like to advise us of the importance of Knowledge in Islam. So that we'll be able to recognize the alim, the people who are considered as rasikhun of ilm, those who are firmly grounded in Islamic knowledge. Because we see a lot of people who are posing in front of a maktaba, a library of books. But really, when you're listening to what they're saying, they are not saying anything which is in line with the Quran and Sunnah. But those people who have a basic, a general understanding, or they have a firm enough foundation in Islam, they'll be able to ascertain that. But those who are weak-minded, they will not be able to understand that. They'll be fooled by the scenery. They'll be fooled by the person's speech. Allah had warned us in his book, in many places in his book. For example, he says, Allah referring to the Yahud. That you have some who have knowledge but Allah Ta'ala gave the example of those people who have knowledge is like a camel carrying a load of books. What an example Allah Ta'ala gives. There's a totally disconnect between those who have access to information and those who can get knowledge and present the knowledge in a correct fashion. So that the listener can understand and grasp. So there are many people who can quote narrations, but at the end of the day, where are we going with those quotes? What are we trying to prove? That we have good hefs, we can memorize and regurgitate certain sayings of the Salaf and the people of the past or a hadith out of context? Allah says in Surah Anbiya, Verse number seven. 
illa rajal nuhi ilayhim fas ahal al dhikr in kumtum la ta'lamun we have not sent to you except in every generation before people of knowledge who Allah azza wa jal had told us that these people are the ahl dhikr the people of right understanding we should consult them Allah azza wa jal says Allah said ask those who know when we do not know it's a very profound statement but when we have so much access to information how is it that we're going to be able to ascertain and and know which thing is correct and which person is on the right manhaj aqid and manhaj it's very difficult so now the majority of young seekers of knowledge are confused they're confused alhamdulillah rabbil alamin that the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he told us that in every generation there will be individuals who will purify the ummah of the falsehood and those people who give false interpretation of things the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said la tazal ta'ifat min ummati dhaharin ala al-haq there will never cease to be a taifa a group if my ummah that will be clearly established upon the truth walhamd one of those individuals is muhammad ibn ismail he was from azbakistan he was not arab he is commonly known as imam bukhari he is one of those people who compiled a set of books which the ulama the scholars have stated that it is the most authentic collection of ahadith sayings and actions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam after the book of allah that's why we refer to it as sahih al-bukhari and who was this talmid imam muslim also non arab we have sahih al-bukhari and we have sahih muslim and the ulama have stated that these are the most authentic books after the book of allah so this is a a signpost that when we hear people speak and they love to narrate a hadith coming by way of bukhari and muslim then we can say that this is a good sign of the knowledge or the information that this person is carrying and imam al bukhari he has a chapter in his book titled al ilm qabla qawl wal amal that knowledge must precede speech and action allahu akbar showing his fiqh showing his understanding showing his deep insight into the matter and the importance of knowledge so many of us may feel that because we are from a place far away from the middle east or we're at a certain age we can't learn no we can all learn the local arabia we can take the steps and learn because this is the miftah this is the key to the knowledge learning the arabic language learning the quran the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam stated talib al ilm farida ala kulli muslim that the seeking of knowledge is obligatory on every muslim every muslim must have within themselves the desire to be a talib al ilm a seeker of knowledge we can't say no 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 it's not for me this is a phenomenon that is very prevalent nowadays that we say no no this is not for me why is it for us the prophet so like some said that we have to it's a fard farida the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he stated this so we have to appreciate that and seek the knowledge seek the knowledge there is some daif ahadith atlub al ilm walaw bi sin this hadith is daif seek not it's afwan it's mawdu it's fabricated it said the prophet sallam said said seek knowledge even if it's in china this is a fabricated hadith the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said talib al ilm 
faridat ala kulli muslim the message of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam had said this hadith is in the sunan of abu daud and for abu daud anhu who said that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to make this dua alhuma inni a'udhu bika min ilm la yanfa'u wa min qawl la yaqsha'u wa min nafs la tashba'u wa min dua la yastajab lahu aw qam khas sallallahu alaihi wasallam the message of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to make this dua asking allah O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from knowledge which does not bring any benefit. And I seek refuge in you from a heart that is not fearful of you. And I seek refuge in you from a nafs, the desire which is always craving, that is never satisfied. And I seek refuge in you from a dua that is not answered allah akbar if you were to ask the majority of the youth today how is it that we get our duas answered what is it that we are asking allah for what is it that we want and aspire for in life is it in line with the quran and sunnah is it in line with the proper understanding of how we should look at life in the first place What did the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam ask for? First and foremost, what did he seek refuge in Allah from? Alhumma inni a'udhu bika min al-ilm la yanfa'u. The first thing he asked Allah for is I seek refuge in you from that knowledge which brings no benefit. Allahu akbar. From this dua, we see the state of affairs of the Muslims. More specifically the youth that they're wasting time online and looking at things that bring no benefit in their dunya or the akhira la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah there's no movement there's no power except with allah we know this experts have spoken about this that the attention span of the youth is very short 3 to 4 minutes so they know what they're putting out there la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah we have to take this life seriously because if the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is going to ask allah protection and refuge from knowledge which brings no benefit what about us what about us the majority of us don't even know what are the shurud what are the conditions of of astinja of wudu of tahara of how even to make dua We don't even know the small aspects of knowledge as if it is nothing. The Sahabi Ikram radhiyallahu anhum ajma'in they used to start by learning these things of how to make wudu. What is tahara? What is the proper way to make istinja? To cleanse ourselves from impurity. One Yahudi was making fun of Sulaiman al-Farsi. He says your prophet taught you everything. Is that making fun of him even how to go to the bathroom salaman al farsi said he said naam yes even how to go to the bathroom he said when we're going to go to the bathroom we shouldn't use we shouldn't face the qibla we shouldn't use defecate facing the qibla we should use our left hand we should use an odd number of objects of stones allahu akbar allahu akbar allahu akbar So we are honored to be a part of the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and we need to start with these so-called or seemingly insignificant aspects of knowledge and become firmly grounded in this knowledge and then we move on most of us are well informed about celebrities their status their gender what they are like and so many things that have nothing to do with us and that will have no influence on us or impact on our lives this is the situation of the youth today ma'asif shadid i'm very sorry to say so we have to tell them that they have to become talabat al-ilm we need to guide them and look for those people who can help them this reminds me of a hadith that the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says idha mat ibn adam in qata am al ilm in thalath when the sons and daughters of adam die all of our deeds are cut off except for three he says sadaqatan jariya 
an ongoing charity, ilmanafia, beneficial knowledge, and a righteous child that we leave behind to pray for us. So we all have an opportunity to gain benefit after we are gone. If we don't have children, then let us look for an opportunity where we can build a well, start a good food program, start it, and make sure you put people in charge who are going to continue this ongoing charity because we don't know when we're going to pass away. We can learn and we can teach and set up institutions where people can get authentic knowledge. There are many ways that we can benefit after we are gone. And if we have children, make sure we teach them the right thing. Make sure they are learning the right thing when we're here. Make sure they know how to source information and seek the knowledge. We know that if we're not learning, then what are we doing? If our children are online following the latest gossip, columns, or they're looking for the conspiracy theorists, and they're not studying, not learning, then what's going to happen to us when we're gone? We, will, we expect them to make dua for us if they're spending hours online wasting time. It's a hadith. The Prophet says, من حسن الإسلام المر تركه ما لا يعني أقم خاص الله السلام from a person's good Islam is that we leave alone those things which do not concern us. I've said this before and I've stated this many times in the past. And we have to be acquainted with this. That we are living in Akhir Zaman. We're living in the last period of this earth. And we see all of the alamat al the smaller signs, the suhra, the smaller signs. We're just waiting for a few big signs to come. The sun setting from where it rises. The the jail, the Messiah, the jail, Isa ibn Maryam. We're waiting for only a few things. The, the, the Mahdi Mantadr. We're only waiting for a few major signs of the last day. But there's a hadith collected in Sahih Bukhari. And the thought of Abdul bin As. Was said that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi he said, he heard the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Allah does not take away the knowledge by taking it out of the hearts of the people, but he takes it away by the death of the ulama. And then when the ulama, they pass away, there is no ulama left, then the people will take what remains of these ignorant people will be on the earth. When they are consulted, they will give an answer without knowledge. Because they are astray, and they will be leading other people astray. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. Also, there is an authentic hadith in Sahih of Imam Bukhari, and the third of Radha Anhu, who said that the Mesh of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had stated, سَيَأْتِي عَلَى النَّاسِ سَنَوَادٍ قَدْ دَعَاتٍ the Mesh of Allah, he has stated, a time will come, and if this is not the time from this hadith, then I don't know what is. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that a time will come when people will become very confused. When people will become very confused. When a liar will be believed. And a person who will be considered as truthful will be considered as a liar. Allah Akbar. And the Ruwaybida will be speaking. The Sahaba, they said, what is this word that you're using? What is this? The Prophet is a rajal and tafir. Insignificant person. A useless, worthless individual will be the one talking all the time. Allah Akbar. The person who is considered as insignificant, rajal tafir. 
that the column he's speaking in the affairs of the people, in the affairs of the people. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. And Sheikh Asindi yet stated in his explanation of this hadith is that it is the person with very little knowledge. Allah Akbar. If this is not the time that we're living in, but we see a person posing behind, in front of a set of books, and he's speaking, and we're watching and listening to him, and he's a person with very little knowledge, but because we're fooled, because we do not have a firm grounding, a firm foundation in Islam, we're watching him. It's like entertainment. It's like entertainment. So many of us now are glued to social media and the weak-minded ones amongst us are deceived by these individuals. Instead, we need to advise one another. When we get sent this video, it's tempting to just block the person or to watch it and just let it go. But if we're going to take the time to watch it and we see something reprehensible in it, that is wrong, that is misguidance, we need to take the time and advise the individual to stop spreading this. Stop spreading this. We set up a group and we start to post things. We ourselves didn't even watch it. We don't know if it's authentic or not, but we post it. We are doing this for what reason? To gain popularity? To gain more followers? We want more likes? What is the purpose behind us posting these things? Why do we set up the group in the first place? We want to be a benefit to the people. Alhamdulillah, I mean, knowledge is accessible, but we have to be careful. May Allah Azza wa Jal help all of us and guide all of us and keep us guided. Allah Sabir Arashad. Amin, Amin, Amin. Bismillah. Salatu Salam ala Rasulullah wa ala alihi wa sallam wa taba. Huda wa bad. One of the signs that a person is calling to the right path is that their statements will match and coincide with their actions. We have to know that. Alhamdulillah, I mean, coming closer to the last days, Akhir Zaman, that we'll have an increase of speakers. And we don't want to fall in that category. We don't want to be one of those new speakers. What we do when we learn and when we teach or we share is for the sake of Allah. We don't want to learn so we can argue with the people. We should not learn so that we can argue with the people. Again, we should not learn to argue or to prove our point or to prove our intelligence. One of the signs is that we are seeking it because we want to gain taqwa. One of the signs is that we're seeking the knowledge because we want to gain nearness to Allah. We want to become a better practicing Muslims. Allah says, Ya ladina aminu. Oh, you believe. Or you who believe, why do you say that which you do not do? Most hatred, indeed it's most hatred in the sight of Allah that we say that which we do not do. So may Allah bless us and increase us in ilm nafi'an, in beneficial knowledge. We do not want to be like those people who are looking at those men and women on social media because we just want to be like them. Remember the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has stated, Talib al-Ilm farid al Muslim. The seeking of knowledge is a must upon every Muslim. We need to be sincere seekers of knowledge. Some of us are jealous of others because of what they have in this dunya. We look at social media and we become jealous. We want what they have. I want us to leave us with this, that maybe we are aware or we're unaware of this, that last week, the former Miss USA 2019 
the former Miss USA, 2019, she committed suicide. La hawla wa la quwwata billah. She allegedly jumped off of her Manhattan suite, living the life. This is a lady that she was a beauty queen. She had a law degree. She was practicing law, and she also was a host, a TV correspondent, an extra. This is a, a lady who jumped off her 60-story condo, penthouse condo in Manhattan. Beauty, money, wealth, prestige. She had it all. But she did not have the peace, the inner peace that comes with it. So remember, my dear Basalam Niman, that we can have everything in life. We can look and aspire to want what these people have on social media, the cars, the yachts, the fancy houses, the Rolex, all these things. Our youth are looking and wanting to have these things. But if we don't have peace of mind, we have nothing. May Allah Ta'ala bless us in what we have. May Allah Ta'ala bless our families. May Allah bless our children. May Allah bless our wealth. May Allah bless all of our hearts and our minds. And bless us and give us that desire, the rahba, to be sincere talabat al students of Islamic knowledge. Amin, amin, amin. In Allah, wa like you saloon and a nabi. Ya lidina amenu. Sonnet. Homo salila Muhammad, wa la Muhammad. Come on, salat ala Ibrahim, wa la Ibrahim, in the Kahamidu Majid. Al Homo barakala Muhammad, wa la Muhammad. Come on, barakala Ibrahim, wa la Ibrahim, in the Kahamidu Majid. Robin Artin, if you're in the Hassanat. Wafa, come on, 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 come on,